Throughout the centuries of ancient history, the Aramean people have played a significant role in the development and formation of the Levant region and neighboring areas in the Middle East. While not as prominent as major empires like Assyria, Babylon, or Persia, the Arameans have left a notable imprint on the culture, history, and language of this region. The journey of exploration into the Aramean people takes us back to the expansive eras of the ancient world when Aramean tribes began to migrate and establish the earliest communities. From the northwestern lands of Mesopotamia to the southern Levant and eastern Anatolia, they played a crucial role in creating a network of trade and cultural communication among different tribes and regions. Studies on the Aramean people not only help us understand the development of the Aramaic language and its influence on cultural history, but also provide us with a deeper insight into how small communities can impact the development of larger regions. The stories of the Aramean people are an integral part of the diverse and rich historical tapestry of the ancient Middle East. Many scholars have posed questions about the origins of the Aramean people and how they came to infiltrate the Levant region. Were they a migrating group from other areas into this region, or were they simply descendants of earlier Iron Age local tribes? The emergence of the Arameans marked a significant breakthrough in the history of this region. They established their own small kingdoms, with the most powerful centered in the ancient city of Damascus. The ancient Arameans initially were nomadic pastoralists, but after establishing or inheriting cities, some began to adopt a settled lifestyle. In the 12th century BCE, the first documented mention of the Arameans comes from King Tiglath Pileser of Fuers, who referred to them as a major nuisance. He recounted crossing the Euphrates River at least 28 times to deal with the Arameans causing trouble on his western border. One of Tiglath Pileser I's successors, Asher Belkela, also reported numerous campaigns against the Arameans. At that time, the Arameans had encroached deep into Babylon, though without a specific state, living as peripheral society migrants. Nevertheless, they still caused considerable trouble for the local populace. According to records from the Babylonian king Adadaplaidina of the Isintu dynasty, the Arameans attacked and desecrated sacred sites including Deir, Sipar, and even the holy city of Nippur. The era of the Aramaeans came around the 11th century BCE when several small Aramaean kingdoms emerged in northern Levant. Notable among them were kingdoms like Bithayani, Bitzamani, Bitadini, Bitagusi, Bithalupi, and perhaps even Aram Damascus. Despite the expansion of the Assyrians and their territorial conquests, the Aramean kingdoms never formed any long-lasting alliances, with their alliances serving specific purposes to thwart threats before dissolving. For example, in 853 BCE, Shalmaneser III fought the Battle of Karkar, where a coalition against Assyria was predominantly led by the kings of Damascus and Hamath. Scholars believe this coalition temporarily halted Assyria's westward expansion until internal disputes arose. Each eventually fell into the hands of Shalmaneser III about a decade later. The Arameans have intrigued many researchers regarding their origins and how they managed to infiltrate the Levant region. Some theories suggest they may have been a newly migrating group into the area, while others propose they are simply descendants of pre-existing groups inhabiting the region since the early Bronze Age. The Arameans established separate small kingdoms, with the most powerful centered in the ancient city of Damascus. Initially nomadic pastoralists, they shifted towards a settled lifestyle after establishing or seizing cities. The earliest recorded mention of the Aramayans comes from King Tiglath Pileser I, who described them as a major nuisance. He recounted crossing the Euphrates River at least 28 times to deal with Aramaeans causing disturbances on his western border. Successors to Tiglath Pileser I, like Asher Belkala, also reported numerous campaigns against the Aramaeans. During that time, the Arameans expanded their territory into Babylon, though lacking a specific nation-state and living as peripheral societal migrants. Nonetheless, they remained a significant disruption to the local populace. 
The records of Babylonian king Adad Apla Edina of the Isin II dynasty also documented Aramean assaults on sacred sites such as Der, Sippar, and even Nippur. The 11th century BCE witnessed the emergence of small Aramean kingdoms in northern Levant, including Bit Hayani, Bit Zamani, Bit Adini, Bit Agusi, Bit Halupe, and possibly Aram Damascus. Despite Assyria's territorial expansions and conquests, the Aramean kingdoms did not form any long-term alliances and only collaborated to counter specific threats before disbanding. For instance, in 853 BCE, Shalmaneser III faced a coalition against Assyria, led by the kings of Damascus and Hamath, in the Battle of Karkar. Though believed to have temporarily halted Assyria's westward expansion, this alliance quickly dissolved as its members began to clash, eventually falling into the hands of Shalmaneser III. The Aramaeans' tumultuous history has profoundly influenced their culture and language across the ancient Middle East. As one of the most populous groups during the Iron Age, they experienced significant dispersion due to Assyrian expulsions, leading them to concentrate in various regions within the Assyrian, Babylonian and even southwestern Anatolian empires. The Aramaic language, known for its ease of use and efficiency, became the official means of communication in the region, replacing the ancient Akkadian language that had existed for millennia. The Aramaean language's writing system, adapted from the Phoenician alphabet, facilitated text-based communication, making it more convenient and expedient compared to the complex cuneiform script of the past. Despite the widespread adoption of Aramaic, information about Aramaean history and culture is scarce, except for Assyrian records. Many other Aramaean tribes lived beyond this region, but information about them is also limited. Following the collapse of the Neo-Assyrian Empire, the Aramaeans endured successive conquests by the Neo-Babylonians, followed by the Achaemenid Persians, Seleucids, and Romans. During the rise of Christianity, many Aramaeans converted and embraced this new religion, which they continue to follow to this day. Some Aramaeans also converted to Islam as the religion spread in the region. In the medieval period, most Arameans assimilated into Arab culture, though some retained their Aramean identity and Christian faith. Today, some Christian communities in the Fertile Crescent are identified as Aramean, while others are recognized as Assyrian and use the Aramaic language. Exploring the Arameans reveals that they were not just an ordinary ancient people, but also a significant factor in the development and shaping of the ancient Middle East. Migration, dispersion, and upheaval created a complex journey for the Aramaeans, contributing to the cultural and linguistic diversity of the region. Despite having fewer documents than some other peoples, the Aramaeans still left a profound mark on the history and culture of the Middle East. Learning about them not only opens a window into the past, but also helps us better understand the development of humanity and culture throughout history. What are your thoughts on the Aramaeans? Do you believe they were truly troublemakers? I'd love to hear your opinions in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to continue our journey of exploring ancient history. Thank you for your attention.